and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And you'll have to excuse the frog in my throat today. I'm feeling, um, I'm ailing slightly. Um, so hopefully nothing too serious, but it, it might mean that um, I lose my voice or something. That would be a disaster. But the, the puzzle I'm going to attempt for you is called Chaos Circles by Senator Gronk, uh, a constructor that I have tackled many times before. And Senator Gronk's puzzles uh, are always brilliant, but rarely easy in my experience. I think this one has four stars out of five for difficulty. Some absolutely wonderful comments. It's been recommended to us a number of times and it features, well, it features two things that I find slightly scary. One of which is um, the fact that there are no regions in this puzzle. So it's chaos construction. We're going to have to build the regions ourselves. And the second is it's the circles constraint, this, this new constraint. We've seen loads of puzzles in this genre over the last month or so. Um, and the circles basically mean that when you put a number in a circle, that number has to appear that number of times in the circles. So it's this self-referencing um, gubbins that, uh, well, it confused me mightily in the puzzle I did the other day by Dorlear and Marty Sears. Um, but hopefully I might be better today. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure my brain's working at optimum efficiency. But um, let, let actually let me start today by just mentioning that on the channel over the last few days, we've had some really astonishing stuff that I, I hope you check out. I've loved the comments so far on yesterday's arithmetic quiz philomeno. Loads of you pumping in some extraordinary times on that, like six minutes and less. Um, I think if, you, if you're getting that done in anything under 10 minutes, very well done. It's fantastic to see. Um, and yes, it is slightly easier than our usual fare, but it's been great to see so many of you enjoying enjoying a puzzle like that. Uh, M Nasty 2 has done very, very fine work indeed with that one. Uh, and then this, oh, not this puzzle, this puzzle is the other one I wanted to mention specifically. Um, this is called Difference of Squares and it's by MathGuy underscore 12. And in my opinion, this is one of the most wonderful wonderful Sudokus we've ever featured on the channel. It is more mathematical than a lot of the things we do, but the the conceit behind this is quite exceptionally clever. Um, and for any of you out there who, who are, do have a mathematical bent, please, please have a look at this. You, you will love it. And then of course we had the Ren Sudoku pack as well. So we did, we had Ren Day on Friday, which was wonderful. Big shout out, especially to Zegres on that because um, I think Zegres's encouragement to me, especially to do a reaction video to High Ren. I, I've been absolutely loving the comments on that video. So thank you so much if you've taken the time to comment on it. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, I, I'm delighted to see I didn't do such a bad job at the reaction video. Then we had Analytical Ninjas, 10 Puzzles in One Sudoku. There's just absolutely amazing stuff going on around the channel at the moment. And we have a, we have a big October planned as well, I can tell you. I know we're halfway through October, but there are some, there are some exciting things ahead. Uh, now, what else did I want to mention? There were some other things. Uh, let me, oh yeah, because I spend so much time on, on the internet, I found this on Twitter earlier and it, it, it amused me greatly. The older I get, the more I wonder what Kevin's dad did for a living to afford this house and a vacation to Paris for nine people. I mean, if you're of a certain age, <laughs> that's just, that, it's so on the money. It's so on the money. You know, you don't watch Home Alone from quite the same perspective anymore. Um, so, yeah, made me smile anyway. Um, any other news? We've got our Trick or Treat Sudoku uh, hunt over on Patreon. Uh, that's this month's monthly reward. Loads of you loving that with good reason. We've got Line Sudoku, our brand new app out. Have a look at that. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements to make um, in the form of birthdays. Echo, happy birthday today. And I know this because your husband, um, Willow, wrote to us and said, uh, I think he has planned a chocolate cake with strawberry sauce and chocolate ganache icing for you. So Echo, it is going to be a good day. Uh, I think we can say that assuredly, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful birthday. And also to Lily, 
it's your birthday today and I know this because Lorinda wrote to us and this is the record breaking birthday announcement in terms of how much notice I was given. In fact the difference in notice between Echo's announcement um, requested by Willow and Lily's announcement sur suggested by Lorinda I don't think it will ever be beaten because uh, Willow's request came in uh, late last night and Lorinda's request came in back in March. So I'm quite, I'm quite pleased I've remembered um, uh, Lily's birthday. Lily, I hope you have a very good one. Um, and that's all the news. So why don't we have a look at Chaos Circles. Let's see if my voice holds up and see what Senator Gronk has in store for us. These are the rules that we've got to apply today. So we've got each row, column and region contains the digits one to nine with no repeats. Regions consist of nine orthogonally connected cells and must be determined. So this is sometimes called chaos construction. Oh, I suppose hence the name of the, type of the, of the, of the puzzle, chaos circles. Um, and what it means, what does it mean, nine orthogonally connected cells? Well, two cells are orthogonally connected if they share an edge. So these two cells are orthogonally connected. These two cells are not orthogonally connected because they only touch one another at a point. We could make these green cells orthogonally connected by adding in that one there. So uh, a region of nine orthogonally connected cells could look something like one, two, three, one more. That I think that would be a, that is potentially a region that we'll find in this puzzle. It would amuse me greatly if it turned out to be uh, one of the regions. Um, and then we've got. Uh, then we've got the circled clues. So we've got circle digits indicate exactly how many circles contain that digit. So imagine this square was a nine. Then we would know nine circles altogether have to have nines in them. That's right, isn't it? So if this was a seven, we would know that seven circles altogether had to have sevens in of which this would be one so there would have to be another six circles with sevens in them so it it, it, it plays with your head this this rule it really does um, now digits in cages indicate the number of cells it can see digits in cages indicate the number of cells it can see orthogonally including itself i might reword that that slightly um, when we when we assuming I can do the puzzle because I know what that means but I don't think it it quite means what it says digits in cages indicate the number of cells it I think by it it means that cell can see orthogonally including itself or maybe it means the cage but um, how do I think this works let's say that was a nine I think that's saying that this sees nine cells of its own region ortho orthogonally. So it could be uh, something like that, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So obviously all of these cells would be in different regions to the nine. And the nine would see those five in its vertical sort of paradigm and these extra four in its horizontal paradigm for nine altogether. Now imagine that, imagine we rearrange this cage slightly. Let's take that out and put that one in. Now we haven't just made a T, but this nine wouldn't be right, would it? Because this this cage now sees one, two, three, four vertically and one, two, three, four horizontally, a further four horizontally for, for a count of eight. So that would then be an eight into this square. So what, what we're trying to do is to work out, it's like a cave type rule if you're familiar with cave logic. So the rules go on to say region borders block line of sight and not all, ca not all cages are necessarily given. Okay. Um, so what that means is it's perfectly possible, for example, for this square in this puzzle to be a, uh, if that, if that was a four in the finished puzzle, and this was the shape of this region, you could see that that could have been a caged cell, but it isn't, and it doesn't have to be. That's what the not all cages are necessarily given means. My phone is buzzing at me like crazy. Why does this always happen the moment I turn on the webcam? I don't know. 
Anyway, those are the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. Um, now, I was going to say that the the thing I have learned about circles puzzles is that the thing you must do at the start of a circles puzzle is count the circles. So let's do that. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25. Oh, <laughs> and almost counted that, but that's a cage. That's not a circle. 25. So we're on 28. We're on 30. 35. Ah, no, no, no. I don't want to get 35 circles. Have I miscounted those? One, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-five. No, I haven't actually. Um, mm, that's annoying because. Um, well, I thought we were going to have to use the secret, <laughs> and the secret is something I only tell my favourite people. But if you're still watching this video, you're definitely one of those people, and the secret is. That the nine Sudoku digits, if you add them up, you add up nine plus eight plus seven plus six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one, you get 45. Now, normally in circles puzzles I've done, you get a number close to 45 when you add up the circles. And that tells you something useful about the circles. But here, well, here it's very unclear to me at least. Because but what we know now is that the, the uncircled digits in this puzzle, i.e. the digits that are never circled, sum up to 10 in total, but that could be like 1, 2, 3, and 4. If 1, 2, 3, and 4 appeared in... I was about to say, no, you can't... No, that's impossible because we have got 7. We've got... A, ah, okay. So we've got at least 7 different circled digits. So we've got a maximum of two digits. Well, so we have no, in fact, we have got two digits then that are uncircled in the puzzle, whatever goes into these two squares. So say this was a three and a seven, then no threes and no sevens could be circled in the puzzle because these squares, those, those digits in row three would add up to 35 and so say one of them was a nine, there would be nine nines in the puzzle, nine eights, uh, nine eights, eight eights, eight circled eights, because there'd be an eight in a circle. So you can see how it, the number of circles is sort of equivalent to the sum of nine plus eight plus six plus five plus four plus two plus one, if you see what I mean. Hopefully that was clear. Um, so these two digits add up to 10 those two digits add up to 10. The same, same in this column, actually. That must apply in the columns as well, mustn't it? So those two digits must add up to 10. Oh, no, I see. I've done it. When I say I've done it, that is probably not the most accurate description I've ever given of the state of Sudoku in which I've entered absolutely zero numbers. Um, but I have just seen something very clear, which is that there is no, there are no circles in row six. So how, yeah, okay. So, so, so that's important, isn't it? Because if there are no circles in row six and you put nine in a circle anywhere, how can you ever fulfill that? You can't. If you can't see why that is, by the way, do pause the video and give yourself a moment or two. Um, it's worth thinking about because circles are crazy. Um, for those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. So the reason you can't do it is a simple count. If you put a nine in a circle, that's saying that nine circles contain a nine. But there are only nine nines in Sudoku. And there is one nine in each row of this puzzle. So the nine in this row cannot be circled and therefore you cannot put um, nine nines in circles because there are only eight nines in the remaining rows. So, so what this is, this is really clever because now, not of me I should hasten to add, of Senator Gronk, because now once nine isn't circled, one is the other digit that can't be circled. So because nine and one give us, give us 10, 
45 minus 10 is the 35 we need for the total number of circles. So these are 1s and 9s. Everything in rows that had uh, these have got to be 1s and 9s. Um, and uh, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but it means there's a very, I mean, there's a very strange sort of fish going on in this puzzle now. You know, like nine has to be in one of those three squares. Nine has to be in one of those squares. Ah, okay, but. Good grief. Okay, this puzzle is going to yield some. It's going to do. We're going to be able to do some some tricks now, aren't we? Because just as we said that this row has no circled nine in it, it doesn't have any circled eight in it either. And yet we know eight is a circled digit. So eight eights in this puzzle are circled, but the eight in this row is uncircled. So the remaining eight eights are all circled. So every row must contain a circled eight and there is only one circle in row nine. So that's an eight. And that means that's an eight because there must be a circled eight in row two. It, oh, nearly. I thought we were going to get the eight there, but we don't. Um, Sorry, there must be a circle eight in row one, I think I was meant to say. But there must be a circle eight in row two, so there must be an eight over here. There must be a circle eight in row whatever this is, seven. And that must be in one of those two squares as well. So there is now an X-wing of circled eights, which means that all of these circles can't be eights anymore. And again, that's worth thinking about. If you're not, not sure why that is, it's worth just pausing and thinking about it. That the way to get the way the way to understand this pattern of eights is to ask facetious questions about column one and column two. So let's ask those facetious questions. How many eights do we think there are going to be if I manage to correctly complete this puzzle in column one? Now, hopefully, you will say one eight. How many eights will there be in column two? Hopefully, you will say one eight. So there are two eights altogether in those columns. But we also know that there are two eights in those four squares. So how many eights can there be in the remainder of the cells in this column? The answer is zero, which takes eight, look, out of all of those squares. Let's just give those a flash for a moment and see if that helps. So we can also in effect flash all of those. So the eights now nah, that column that this sorry, this row has two positions for its eights. Um hmm. No, okay. okay, but does, uh, I've changed my mind now, does that mean this is a seven? I mean, it does, it does, but hang on. Yeah, this is, this is going to be magnificent. This is such a clever idea. Right, so just as we asked, we asked, the question we asked, asked about eights, we're now going to ask it about sevens. Okay. We know seven is a circle digit in this puzzle because the only digits that aren't are nines and ones. So sevens is set, so there needs to be seven circled sevens. How many circled sevens are there in this row? Zero. How many circled sevens are there in this row? Zero. So every other row needs to have a circled seven in it. Well, that means that's got to be a seven. That means that, well, one of those has to be a circled seven. Ah, that is now a seven, eight pair by the power of, oopsie, by the power of circlage, because the seven and the eight can't go here in this square. So can, there might be a uniqueness point about whether this can be seven, eight, which I wouldn't use. I'm just letting me, no, it probably isn't actually, because yeah, we have no clue what the regions look like. So no, there isn't a uniqueness point. Um, so, 
Okay, well, what about... Does it work with sixes, then? It, it, it ought to, I'm going to say. Yeah, okay, so there are six circled sixes, and I can see three rows that can't have a circled six straight away. So every other row has a circled six, which means that's a six. It means... Ah, okay, so let's come back to row two now. We know row two has a circled six, a circled seven, and a circled eight. And none of those are there. So this is a 678 triple. And that's not 8. So is this 5? <laughs> um, probably. It might be. Yeah, it, it, this is, we're just going to keep... I think... I'm not so totally sure about this because these two seem to have the same number of circles in them. But I feel like we can just keep iterating down. In the sense that, I mean, clearly we can't put a circled 5 in this row. We can't put a circled 5 here, here, or here. So there are four rows in which we can't, we can't put a circled 5, which means there are only five fives available in the remaining rows. So they must be allocated one per row, and that's got to be a 5. 5... Six. So yes. So now, this is a bit strange. But if we we know that every row has a circled five, well, every row that can has a circled five, six, seven, and eight. So this has got to be a five, six, seven, eight quadruple, and that's got to be a four. Let's just let's just check that this is a four by asking the question: How many fours can we put in? several rows so there's no four in that row one two three four there are five rows in which we couldn't have a circled four but we need four circled four so the remaining rows must each have a circled four and that's the only position for it in row four and therefore yeah, so, so this sort of keeps going, doesn't it? So in this row, we've now got the ludicrous concept of a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 quintuple. And this square is going to have to be a 3. I think. Yeah, and that's going to be a 2 by the same token. Let's. I mean, I'm sure that's right. I'm just going to check. Because I'm paranoid. 1, 2, 3 four, five, yeah, there are six rows that can't have a circled three. So the remaining rows must each have a circled three, which means that's a three. And that's going to be the row in which there's not a circled two. So there must be a circled two in this one. Um, in this cell here, which sees all the other digits by Sudoku. So what I could do, I suppose, no, I, I don't want to do it, but I, I mean, I could obviously now label all those digits with all the remaining options, but that's silly, I'm not doing that. Ah, ah, hang on, my X-Wing on 8s, I should avail myself of that in case that matters. There's a no 8 here, look, no 8 here by Sudoku. God, this is magic, it's absolutely magic. Um... Right, okay, I'm going to tell you something else about column 4. That's not a 1, because if I've understood the rules correctly, if you put a 1 in a cage, it can't see anything else. That's the only... It, it's penned in on all sides, because region borders block view. So all of those could... This 1 would count itself, and all these would be in a different region. And that would be a region of size 1, which is not the same as a region of size 9. So that's a 9. This is a 1. This is a 9. I don't know what that means. Bother. Um, well, actually, maybe, maybe rather than pencil marking all of the circles, I mean, in this row, for example, that's a one, two, nine, triple, isn't it? That might be worth recording. Although, actually, no, it doesn't do anything. Um, right. So here's a question. 
Here is a weird question. Are the circles now absolutely useless in this puzzle? I think they might be. Well, unless unless we get we reach a situation where we could, for example, if we knew if if we knew neither of these was an eight, then we could start running this logic that we've done in the rows on the columns by saying there has to be an eight in each of the remaining remaining columns. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if um, that's actually going to be profitable or not. But what we can do now is to start thinking about cages, especially in this column where we've actually got all the digits. Literally. <laughs> um, so that nine... Well, that nine is actually under pressure. I was about to say, no, I'm going to look at this eight, but I think I'm going to look at the nine. Because one thing I can see about the nine is it's not, it's not purely going horizontally, because that square is going to be a problem. If we go horizontally with the nine, then what's this digit? Well, that's also nine, because it sees everything that this nine does. So that's not right. So this one does have a vertical component, which means it's either going up here or down here. Well, but, oh, which is not, but it's not doing both. Because, because if it did take both, the two would break. Because the two can only see two cells of purplage in the, in the column, if it is, if it is itself purple. I mean, if that's purple, that's hugely powerful because that would be a, effectively a cul-de-sac of purplage. This, this, this wouldn't have any, any purple in those three squares, but it's more likely this is purple. If this is purple, well, hang on, that doesn't work. If that's purple, how does that work? The reason I've got a problem with this being purple is now I can't make this purple because it would be broken immediately. But now this six, well, it can't, I don't think we can get the right, I might be wrong about this, but I, I suspect I've got too much horizontalage going on now in the sense that we, that we can then make a choice about this square being purple or not. But it's, it's, we're going to get too many cells in purple. Because if that's purple, then this 6 needs 3 more purples horizontally. And this 9 needs 6 more purples horizontally. That's already 9 cells in purple that aren't in these cells. And if this is not purple, we just get the same problem. We've got to go, we've got to get 7 more cells in this row to make the 9 work. And 4 more in this row to make the 6 work. So we get, we get far more than nine cells. So actually that's not purple. So I don't know about, well, no, I do. Ah, so now I know this is purple. This is huge. Right, so we've now proved that this one can't be purple. We proved this one can't be just a horizontal stripe. So that is purple and that's cul-de-sac, which means that I should, um, I should depict that, shouldn't I? That is all that's forced. All of all of these can't be purple. But we don't we don't know these are the same colour, but we do know they're not purple. And the nine, oh hang on. The nine has to see eight cells of purple in the row. So those squares are Ah this is just brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant setting. Okay, so there were two things I was thinking as I drew in this stripe of purple. The first was, where's the two in the row? And I don't know the answer to that question. Let me just think about that for a second. I might know it as a result of something else I've noticed, but I don't think I know it. I'm not sure. Um, 
I certainly don't know it without the other thing I've noticed. The second question I thought about as I put this stripe of purple in was, could that be purple? And the answer to that is definitely no. Because what number would you put in there if that's purple? Well, it sees eight cells. So it would be an eight, but we can't be an eight because of our X-wing of eights over here. We, we said that we have an X-wing of eights and we can't put any more eights into these columns. So that's not purple because it can't be an eight. And if it's not purple, it is going to be two, isn't it? Because now we have to make that purple. You've got to put a two in row six, which is not in purple because otherwise it would repeat in purple. So it's got to be here. And therefore we can draw in our first region like this. Um, I, don't, I can't see immediately if I, I'm, I mean, I know this is a cul-de-sac, but I don't know if I know which way, I mean, I, let's draw that line segment. I don't know whether it goes down or up. I can see if it goes down, it's bumping into interesting things. Um, but, oh, hang on. Well, no, it must go up, mustn't it? Otherwise, I've got uh, I've got a, the wrong modulus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here is here is a here is a facetious question. If we if we if we allow the two to enter or to have a region, because we know this is a cul-de-sac, if the if the two is penned off at the top. How much space have I got in the bottom of this grid for regions? Well, I've got nine cells, nine cells, nine cells. That's 27 cells and 28 cells there. How do I split that up into three or three or four regions? How do I split that up into regions of size nine? You can't do it. <laughs> there is no way. So actually, it's very straightforward to say that the cul-de-sac must take this upwards. Um which means we should have a colour for this, shouldn't we? Let's have yellow, which is rather lovely. Oh, and that, that then stops because the two is, not only is the two cul de sac but it also can't see three, can it? So this square is a new colour, we'll make it red. Um, this now means this is yellow. Ah, oh, this is just spectacular. It's spectacular because it, it's got a beautiful flow to it. Um, now, Well, what does that mean? I've got two th two things I think we need to investigate now. The first is I think this might have to be blue, i.e. the same as this. The second is what's that? I think this is, that's more complicated. I can't really see what I think that is actually, if I'm honest, but Let's think about this square. Now this square is at least a seven, so it could pick up two vertically, so it must see five horizontally, so it's going to bump into blue, isn't it? Same is true of this. So these are all blue. Um, okay, can we do more than that? So this is, well, I mean, one thing I can see here is that this is not blue, because if this is blue, we've trapped in an, a region here that's clearly not, well, either that stub of digits can't add up to nine, or that total stub of blue digits is, is definitely too large to be a nine cell region. So this square needs its own color, and that's an eight. So that's going to have to occupy a lot of real estate in the bottom row because it could only take one in the vertical direction. So it must have, even if it took this, it's got seven digits in the bottom row, um, which means those are definitely all green because even if we start there and go seven, we'll always get to this one. If we start there, we'll always get to this one and the overlap is those. So this six now, does that have to take that one? I think so. If it takes this one, 
it still only reaches a count of five, so that's blue. And the, okay, here's, oh, I see, right, okay. Right, so, so the way to approach this now is to think about these two clues. Now, what do we know about the number of vertical cells that these two clues see? Well, we know several things. We know that we know they both must see more vertical clues than this clue sees, because the count the, these cells see the same number. These three cells see the same number of horizontal blue cells, don't they? So how do we increase the count of these two above this one? Well, the answer is going to be we have to take. We can. I mean, hopefully you can see how this must work. Um, th these two are going to have to take some of these cells, but they have to take a different number. So if this if this one was eight, it would take those two, and this would be seven, and it would take that one, and that cell in the corner would be isolated. So that cannot be right. This must be eight. This must be seven. And because this needs to have a different vertical count, this seven needs to have a different vertical count to this, that must be blue. And now because this needs to have a different vertical count to this, those two must be blue. This must not be blue and is now green because it can't be anything else. And now the six can't take this square because then the 6 and the 7 would have the same vertical count and they should have the same number because they see the same horizontal count so that's got to be blue 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and that completes blue so blue gets finished as a result of that this logic around the circles in row 7 uh, oh, I was going to say does that have to be green but maybe that's not true well no, that does have to be green, actually. If that was not green, let's say it, so it would be a new colour. Well, how would that new colour get nine cells? It would have to come along there. But then it bumps into a three, and the three sees five cells horizontally. So that's wrong. So that's definitely green. Now, yeah, this is beautiful, actually. It's exactly the same for this cell. If that's orange, it has to get out, and it immediately sees more than its quota. So that is also green, which now sees three cells. So that's not green. So that is orange. Those are orange. Ah, orange. I wanted to make them orange, not blue. And this... Oh, and the eight needed to see... Right, so that's it. So the eight needed to see seven, which must be there. Eight, nine. So green is done. Green is done, and let's just take a moment. Oh, look, 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 look! I was going to take a moment and feel, and admire, <laughs> admire Senator Gronk's setting, but in fact, I've now seen that I can just fill in all of this. So I wanted to do that, and <laughs> boom! What is that digit? That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Oh, this is beautiful. So that cage digit can only see three vertically. So it is an automatic three in the corner. Now, that digit's interesting. Oh, it did? No, it is very interesting. Because where's that digit in the bottom row? But it can't repeat in its own region by Sudoku, so it's got to go there where it can't be a nine or a two. This is sick. This is so clever. All right, so that's a one. We've just proved that. Um, ah, come on. What does that mean? Oh, look, these two are caged, so we can just count them. That's got to be a five. Sees five horizontally, so that's got to be a six, because it sees an extra one vertically. So these squares are not five or six. So this is right down to four or seven. This, oh, where's the eight in this row? The answer is there. It must There must be a circled eight in every row. That's not a circled eight. That square is not six or seven, but because it sees six, seven in its region. That five sees that square, so that's four. That's seven. That's six. That's five. <laughs> um, 
that's oh no this is good this is still going that's seven there so that's seven that's eight that's six now it sees a seven beneath it so the oh this is this is still going this is seven this is eight good grief um don't know what that means quite does that does that stop there it might do but we did so much sudoku i mean it is outrageous of senator gronk to make us do so much sudoku in in his sudoku puzzle but um can we hmm, don't know maybe this column we have got six digits in this column, so we've not put three, five, and six in. That's the naked single. Three sees five and six in the row. So this is five or six. This is five or six. So if yellow goes here, then that would be forced to be a five because we'd have uh, we'd already have a six in the region. Um, hmm. not sure I'm not sure how best to do this now um, that, what about those squares then they have to be 1, 2 and 9 for sure although we don't seem to know much about 1s, 2s and 9s in the columns alright let's try the blue squares then we need 2, 3, 5 and 9 Ooh, that's, that's going to be the same, isn't it? No, not that one. That's That can't be five. Ah, sorry, I'm just getting stuck. Unsurprisingly, the Sudoku is baffling me. Um, okay, so maybe it, maybe it is this yellow, whether this can be yellow or not. If that's not yellow, yellow would go up there. No, okay, that is yellow by that exact logic. If this was not yellow, let's uh, I'm not saying it's red. It might be red, but let's just make it a different color. Yellow, you can see, has to then go, come out to here. But this six is impossible to fulfill now. It's a cage cell that must see six cells in its own region, and it can see a maximum count of five. So this is yellow, and that well, that's good in and of itself. That means that's five. That's six in the corner. And ooh, well, here is a thought that this six is the same as this. I'm going to claim now, because again, if this wasn't um, if this wasn't yellow, this this uh, four, how would you complete this six? There's only one way, and that's those squares. But they have two eights in them, so we'd have two eights in here. In fact, there's another reason that doesn't work, which is simpler, which is if this is a six, it has to go to the top of the grid. And now red could only be four cells large, but the the eight thing was what I saw. So I think this has to be yellow, which presumably means this has to be yellow. Yeah, I mean that has to be yellow because imagine it wasn't. Um, let's make it grey. Then to connect yellow up, we'd we'd have to make grey nine cells somehow, and then wrap yellow around it in only nine cells and that's two that's impossible so that's um that's now yellow so we've almost got well <laughs> okay so i'm going to come back to my earlier logic which was that i couldn't put two eights in yellow so this six now can't go up here it can't take this square so it's it can take one more vertically but it must take one more horizontally because one, two, yeah. And that's actually interesting because this four now is done. So this is not yellow and this is not yellow, right? Let's try and mark that off somehow. Yeah, okay. And now the six has to see two different, uh, it has to have two cells vertically that the four can't see. 
which means that is yellow because otherwise the six can't complete and we know that the yellow doesn't go in there because otherwise there'd be two eights in yellow and in fact now I think about it I have got nine cells in yellow so that is yellow yellow has been fully fully are delineated a word I hate but it is true to say that it has been done right there's a two here so we get a one nine pair so these squares have got to be three and seven where does seven go in yellow oh see that's worrying I wonder if that was a way of doing yellow more quickly if I'd thought about sudoku digits but of course I didn't um, red has to get out Um, this has to get out. So those two are the same. We'll make those grey. Um, now. What does that mean? 1, 2, 4, 9 in the final column. Which I don't think... Oh no, that's actually... I'm going to do one digit in this column. Because at 1, 2, 4 and 9 have to be placed in the final column into those squares. That square sees 1, 9 and 2. So that's a 4. Um, that's a two actually that sees one nine so this is a well this is great this is a one nine pair and that's a nine so that's one that's nine that's two now nine this is nine we've got to put a nine in blue and we know where it goes so nine we get a two three five pair in uh blue so these squares are a one four pair and sudoku giveth oh nine nine this is a one this is a nine this is now a, a one two pair this is most unlike me <laughs> um i'm doing sudoku two four five um it must be it must be it must be because the world sudoku championship is about to start in fact it's it has started it has started i think toronto is five hours behind me so it has started um if you're still watching this anybody who is competing i'm sorry i'm not there i would like to be there i've got a lot of friends competing today um some people i've not seen since pre-covid um so uh i i wish wish you all well and i will be watching the results with interest and I feel that by some sort of weird osmosis, your Sudoku skills are rubbing off on me today. Um, ah, famous last words. Right, one there. That wouldn't be missed by Tan Tan Dai, would it? That would have gone in very quickly. Um, okay, so what do we do now? Have we... Can I do this one, two pair? Can I do this two, three? Can I do this three, five? No, I can't see how to do more Sudoku. There's probably loads of ways that I'm just not seeing quite. Well, I was about to say I want to look at this grey, but actually I think this eight might might provide an easier win. Because the eight, the eight has to see eight, but it can only see five vertically. So it must see some across here. It must see at least those. So all of this is part of the eight. Now we need a colour for this. Now, what colours have we still got available to us? Not many apart from the black. Oh, light green. Light green is fine. I haven't used that yet. Okay, well, here's another point. That's got to be light green. Because if this eight just ran, ran a mock across the top of the grid... It would break the seven, wouldn't it? So that's got to be light green. Can't have a two by two of... No, I'm only joking. Um, okay, what does that mean? Um, if that's green... I don't know. I was wondering if I could do something with these, but I, th I, th I think until I know, especially whether that's green, it feels difficult to know much more. I don't know. There doesn't, doesn't seem to be any cage cells very near the red region. Maybe it is this cell then. Actually, mm, if you look at this row, I've got a lot of real estate filled in this row. Three three six and eight into the gaps two of which are definitely in the same region 
that. Well, so that, actually that one can't be six. So this is three or eight. I have very, very large difficulties believing this can be eight, actually. How would this be eight? If that's eight, the only way it reaches its its quota is like that. Does that work? I'm just, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So th this eight is correct. This, this is not correct. So that would have to be gray as well. Oh, that does work. One, two, th so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, it doesn't work actually. That doesn't work. The, the, okay, that's interesting. The way I was trying to disprove that, well, there are two ways this doesn't work. The way I was trying to disprove it, if I carried on with my thinking, I could have disproved it this way as well. So the way I was trying to disprove it was, the first thing I noticed when I thought about this being an eight was that I was fencing in some number of white cells in the top right of the grid that I, I could see would then have to join to green. But at that point... I hadn't realized that this would have to be gray as well. So I thought I could pinch one of these in gray, make the rest of them green, and then it would work. The count would be correct. But actually, because this square, this square would have to be a six with a, with a, um, that would make this gray, this would be the complete shape of gray. And there are two reasons this doesn't work. The first is that cell I think has to be a five or a seven by Sudoku in gray. I've not put five and seven into this box and it can't be either of those things. So that's one reason it doesn't work. But there's another reason, which is back to the original reason, which is that these squares are now all, they, they have only have the option of joining green and that would make green 10 cells large. So all of which is a very long winded way of saying, well, hang on. Well, hmm. it's well. We're saying this is three now, but we just. But oh, okay, this is this is awkward. I've proved this is an eight. An eight would join it up with grey. I've now proved it's three. It is three because it can't be anything else. But now I don't know whether it's grey or not. I don't. At least I don't think I do. But this being six or oh, I do I do know now it's grey because this becomes a six or an eight, and it can't reach a count of six without taking this square. So that is grey, and it sees everything. Wow, wow, this is lovely. So that means that is forced. This is a six. It can't be eight anymore. So it sees all of those three, um, and we must hypothecate this. This cell can't be in gray because the three three count would be broken so again we've got an issue here haven't we i've got a very i've got 10 cells on the right hand side that now it could be no no okay i've got 10 cells of white in the top right of the grid now here's the question is it true that there is a new color in, the, in those 10 cells. Now, if it wasn't true, I'd have to fill those 10 cells entirely with green, light green and gray. Now, I've only got three more cells of gray to find. I've only got four more cells of green, and that's not enough. So there is a new color in the top right, and that is gonna take nine of these 10 cells. So that one has got to be the new color, doesn't it? Because if this was now allocated to green or to grey, to get to it, you'd have to take two cells. Yeah, so that's a new colour. Um, now I've run out of colours, so we're going to have to we're going to have to re. Let's reuse. Oh, I was going to re. Let's reuse blue. So this is a new colour. It's blue, and its maximum value is one, two, three, four, five, six. So its maximum value is six. Uh, 
Okay, so it can be six. And then it just, and then it depends. It depends. Well, it can't be one, two or three. So it's, it's four, five or six. So it has to have a vertical component. But if we, if we knew these were both. Yeah, well, that, that's how to do it. Okay, what we've worked out is that not, of these 10 cells, nine are blue. So there's no way that these, these two in particular are green or gray. So they must be blue. And then that, squ that squares a six because it can't repeat in its region. And if that's a six, that says everything it can see is blue. Now, <laughs> now that's blue. <laughs> it's just been um, isolated from the world and blue is finished. And we don't know what that is, but never mind. That's Well, this two sees that one. So that's one, that's two. That's one, that's four. That's three. Oh, this is so beautiful. The way this flows is quite incredible. It really is unusually, unusually brilliant. That's eight by Sudoku. This is three by Sudoku. Um, this eight is now forced. It, oh, it, we are going to have green over here because it must take seven cells in the row because it only sees one vertically. So the seven, so the seven is done. So the five is not part of the seven um, because the seven is finished. Let's um, let's draw that. Oh, ah, no, 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 no. Let's draw this in. Draw this in. Draw that in. I know. I normally. I know. I get into trouble with some people who are very keen on me delineating the black lines on the edge of the grid as well. Um, right. That eight has to be red now because otherwise red can't reach its total. That's got to be red, which means these are both red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, how could that not be? Oh, no, maybe it could be grey. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that could be grey. Ah, OK. Um, how could that be grey and be five? No, it can't. The only way this could be a grey five is it takes those squares, which actually makes grey 10, 11 cells big, which is too big. So that is red and it's almost complete already. Look, oh, but that means that square is not five anymore. Um, what have we not put in red? We've not put in one, two, and four. That's a four. So that's four. That's two. We need to put one in red. So, ah, but that can't be red. Because that cell's then isolated. Oh, that's, have I, can that be red? Can that be a red one? Maybe. I think that has to be, I see, I think I need a one in red. And it can't be this one because that cell would have no friends. So the only way this can work is if that is a red one. That completes red. So let's let's delineate red. And do the, do the edge of the grid. That five is correct. Now these squares are grey because there can't be anything else. One, two, three. So that's nine cells. We've done that. And that should mean that this is light green. And that's a two by Sudoku, because we've got to put a two in green. So that's a two, that's a nine. Um, this is not a two down here. Where are we going to find the easy wins now? Um, I don't know. What about these squares? They, they look ripe for the picking, don't they? One, two, three, four, five, and seven. Yeah, that's a naked single. That's a five. It sees four and seven. But these two, I don't think, are, are known. Oh, no, they are. <laughs> that's a cage. So that's a four. That's a seven. That would have been by far the easiest way of doing that. I just didn't see it. Um... OK, so now we've got a choice, haven't we? Let's try column three, three, six and nine. That, that wasn't that wasn't the most propitious choice, I don't think. That's got to be six or three. And that's got to be six or nine. So literally I get a chocolate teapot triple in this column. 
unless I'm missing something, which is very possible. All right, let's try column five. One, two, so we need three, five, no, three, six, and seven. That's a three. Oh, that's good. That's going to be helpful. That fixes this, which fixes this, which fixes this, which fixes this, which fixes this. Okay, well, that's that's better. All right, let's try this column where we need one and four and something. One, four, and eight. So that's one or four. That's four or eight. And that, oh, that's the naked single then. That's the four, that's the five, that's the four, that's the eight, that's the one. Um, in the top row, we haven't put four and five in, which we now can. In this row, we've not put five and seven in, which we now can. And in the bottom row, we've not put in two and nine. Ah, oh, that is sick. If that's right, that is such a beautiful puzzle. Yes. Wow. Wow. That is just an absolute mesmerizer from Senator Gronk. And is it how difficult was it? It wasn't too bad. I think I've got a bit of circles experience, which helped me. But I, I mean, it, the logic was just gorgeous. The way that you could iterate down the, the, the circles and sort of get a lot of digits, which then happen to be in cages, which then cause some fairly, you know, some fairly clear interactions was, I mean, it's beautiful. The region building was beautiful. I loved, I loved the six, seven, eight in this row. I loved the X wing on eights here, forcing this not to be in purple. Um, what else did I love? Many things. There were many things to love about that. I hope you all had a go. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.